Dr. Jian Yang. Mr. Speaker, as a Chinese, I have to say I was simply astonished by the author of the bill um, because obviously he still believes his approach, the Chinese sounding names approach, is more scientific than the data collected by the Land Information New Zealand. That, 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 that is that initial data published by the Land Information New Zealand, only 3% of the New Zealand property transactions were made by people from overseas, so non-resident buyers. But he believes that this is not scientific enough, and his Chinese name sounding approach is more scientific. And uh, according to that approach, about 40% of Auckland properties were bought by people from China. That is astonishing. So we have this data, although it's initial data, still we believe is more scientific, more reliable than what he believes. So this is labor. This is labor's problem that either labor is unable to see the real causes of various <laughs> issues or is basically too lazy to find the real causes of various issues. In the housing area, they believe, they believe that now the Chinese name sounding approach would be the solution. And then largely this is because of their intention to have some political gain. Of course, they failed. Now, this, uh, this bill itself is just a continuation of this Chinese name sounding approach. There is no need based on what we have <laughs> received from Land Information New Zealand. And it is a wrong approach, basically. We believe the real issue here is housing supply. So to increase supply and to reduce the cost of construction is the way to go forward. Now, how to do that? Now, actually, this um, housing issue has been the issue for many years. Under Labour, it was an issue. But because the issue was too great, too hard to be resolved, so Labour basically left it alone. Now, the national government has been trying to address the issue head on. Now, we have, we have initiated a wide range of programs trying to increase the supply and to reduce the cost. One program is to try to free up more land faster. For that reason, we have established 202 special housing areas. So in these areas, the central government and local government work together to fast track housing development. Talking to developers in these areas, you'll find that they are full praises of this kind of program, although more work needs to be done. And also, uh, interestingly, that member recently proposed this uh, super city boundary. Uh, basically, we should abolish super city boundary. And that is an interesting change of mind. And we believe this is more rational than the Chinese name sounding approach. And we believe this is in the right direction. So we would like to work with Labour in trying to move forward the reforms of uh, RMA. So this second phase of RMA reform will be hopefully moving forward. So in this particular second phase, we would like to prioritize housing affordability. So we look forward to uh, Labour's support for the second phase of RMA reforms. And also much of the building cost uh, has to do with uh, paperwork and efficient council uh, at work. So it is important for us to make sure that RMA reform will increase efficiency of council work. And finally, I would say the Labour, our national government, has been working very hard to make sure our New Zealand families are, afford, are able to afford houses because housing ownership or home ownership is important to our family, to our community, and also to each New Zealander. So we have been working very hard and we have to say this government has been achieving a lot in providing housing supplies and also in reducing the cost. Thank you. Uh, before I call Julian Gentra, I will remind people uh, of the topic of the bill. I think the member has just spoken, made a passing reference to it at the beginning of a speech, maybe for about 30 seconds, and then went into a general housing debate. This is not a general housing debate. It is on this bill. Julian Gentra.